Did that work? I think so. Let's test. I think I just updated the schedule live because I had forgotten to update it last night. There it is. It's updated. Very nice. Okay. So, yeah, you know, back in the day, Ghosts and Goblins and then its sequel, Ghouls and Ghosts, was actually known as a franchise that was one of the infamous quarter munchers. A game that you needed to totally memorize the game in order to do well at it. Just kind of doing things on reaction on the fly didn't cut it. You would end up dropping so much money into this game to try to get progress in it if you were just trying to do it on the fly, reaction, reacting to what was going on on the screen, versus if you played it over and over and you could memorize the patterns, memorize the enemies coming up, memorize the pitfalls and the platforming challenges, okay? This game, at the time in the 1980s, probably was making the most money out of all of the games because previously, video games were, you know, like, think about it, Pac-Man, right? Centipede. <laughs> the games of the 1970s and early 80s were not very complex. They were likely very basic. Um, and even though there was some competition around them, I mean, look at King of Kong and stuff like that, right? Um, it wasn't until this era of arcade games started coming out that really it became almost like a determined addiction to beat an arcade game that was insanely challenging, you know? And th in the modern era, when you think, what are the hardest video games out there? You think anything that's a Souls-born game, you know, Dark Souls, Sekiro, Bloodborne, and then on the other flip side of that, all the other all the other game studios that make them, like Neo and stuff like that, right? You think those are the hardest games out there right now, pretty much. Um, back then, it was games like this in the 1980s that really challenged the hell out of gamers, okay? Now, to some extent, I would say that was a little bit appeased, or not, or not appeased, alleviated when these games were ported to consoles. Because when it's ported to a console... Is it true that you have limited lives? Yes. But at least you're not pumping quarters into your console to constantly keep playing the game. At least you could just repeat it over and over until you memorize the game and then you could you could progress on. But in the arcades, it was different. It was like, damn, I went to the arcade with $5 and I blew through that thing in like 25 minutes on fucking you know, Ghosts and Goblins because that game is fucking nuts. It's so tough. So, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't uncommon for someone to end up blowing way more money than they thought they were going to to try to, you know, conquer a video game in arcades back in the day. So, this is a modern version. It's supposed to be a new game, brand new game. You know, Ghosts and Goblins had a sequel, Ghouls and Ghosts. Then they had Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And then there were a few other iterations over the years. But all of them were console games. And I'm excited to see what is going to happen um, with this game. Will it be exciting? Will it be very challenging? What's going to happen? I don't know. We're going to find out live today. Now, here's the thing. I pretty much expect... I expect to get my butt kicked today. I expect death after death after death. I do not expect to be making any kind of constant progress in this game. Um, I think that I'm going to get my, you know, my ass handed to me. And that's okay. As long as, as you guys are having fun and I'm having fun, uh, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm, you know, I'm not up against, you know, getting my butt kicked repeatedly. You know, I've played some classic franchises before, like Mega Man, stuff like that, where it was not easy. I got through it, but man, I got my butt kicked in those games, right? So, I'm definitely expecting deaths after deaths after deaths, like, just piling up the death count. I really expect to die hundreds of times, if not more, to get through this game. Now, just so you guys know, this is a Switch exclusive. It's not available on any other console right now. Maybe at one point it will be ported, but right now it's a Switch exclusive. 30 bucks. So it's not a full-fledged retail-priced game. I think they realize a game like this that's a throwback to the old days isn't going to bring in a mainstream new audience. They can't sell it for 60 bucks and expect anyone's going to drop that. So it's a $30 release, okay? Um, we'll see what happens as I play it and go from there. Um... I don't know how long it is. Being that it's 30 bucks, maybe it's a shorter game. You know, back in the day, these games were not long. They were just so challenging that it took you forever to beat them. You know, a game that if you knew what you were doing, you probably beat it in like 15 minutes. But since you have no idea what, what to expect, you die and die and die and die and die, and it takes you upwards of four or five, six hours to beat a game that's 15 minutes long. 
You know, I also don't know uh, if the game's going to have good checkpoints or if it'll have any checkpoints. I don't know if it'll have limited lives. I don't know anything about this because I haven't played it yet. The original Ghosts and Goblins, if you had enough money, you could continuously, uh, you know, just keep going. But the console version is not so much. The console versions would usually give you limited lives. So I guess we're going to see today... <laughs> Right? We're going to see today exactly what happens. Um, that's correct. Stinky Ding says, depends if you want to see the real ending, because remember, every Ghosts and Goblins game makes you play it twice. Yeah, and the second time through, doesn't it end up being more challenging, I think? I think it, like, ramps up the difficulty the second time. Like, it's not hard enough the first time. I think the second time it gets even tougher. And then you see the true ending. Okay? So, I guess we're going to see today how it goes. Now, if I play this today, and you guys absolutely hate it, for whatever reason, then, you know, is it, does it suck that I dropped 30 bucks on a game and it's not good for streaming? I mean, yeah, it does, but it, at least I didn't break the bank. At least I didn't drop 60 bucks on it, and then it's a failure. You know what I mean? I definitely wanted to do something different. We've already started up Divinity Original Sin 2 this week, and I wanted to do something different for variety purposes. You know, adding this into the mix, it's definitely a very different game from everything else I'm playing right now. It's not even close to being anything that I'm playing right now. Okay? Now, here's the other thing. Okay? As you guys know, recently I've instituted channel points uh, predictions and wagering of channel points, or penny points as we call them here on the channel. This has had it, added a whole new element to my streams where people are completely interactive now. Not only are they watching the gameplay and engaged in the gameplay because they want to see if I'm going to win or not, but then they get excited when they win or they lose. Sometimes it's down to the wire with some of the gameplay that I do, and it's very suspenseful. <laughs> okay? Um, so, I'm excited to see how this is going to go today. I am. Now, if it goes well, I have another, schedule, another scheduled stream of it later this weekend. I think it's Sunday night. And if it, if it keeps going well and you guys like it and there's more to do, I'll keep playing it. But if this ends up being kind of a, eh, all right, we saw what it was, but it ain't so good game, then we don't have to play it again. We'll see. We'll play it by ear and we'll go by that, okay? I'm hoping that between the fact that I know I'm going to fail a ton and die a ton, plus the fact that you guys are going to be wagering your channel points on how I do, I get the feeling it's going to be an interesting stream, but I could be wrong. I've certainly been wrong before, all right? Only two in a roll. Yeah, funny you said that. I actually have something to say about that. So, for those who weren't here last night, it was the it was pretty much a very, very interesting Call of Duty stream, and here's why. The first 90 minutes of the Call of Duty stream I did last night, which is Black Ops Cold War, that's the one I'm playing, was great. I was getting good matches. I was getting kill streaks. I got two more knife kill streaks. I only needed one more knife kill streak in order to unlock the sledgehammer in the game. It was going really well. People were, were liking it and everything. Then, here's what happened. The new game release update released. Okay? And when the update released, the entire game broke down. The frame rate tanked on every match. It wasn't just one or two matches. For a half an hour straight, every match I played, the frame rate was tanking into, like, the teens whenever I got into a firefight. The, get the matches became incredibly laggy. And it was almost unplayable to the point where like I was trying to get the final knife kill streak. I couldn't even get a knife kill. It was it was that bad. So overnight, there's been a ton of complaints about this. Um, saying that what is up with the game? What happened? And actually, Treyarch has publicly admitted they fucked up. On on Twitter last night, they were like, Yeah, our new update basically made the game perform very poorly on every single version. So we're trying to quick patch this. To make the game run better. Now, I think they said for PlayStation consoles, they've already instituted the quick patch. I don't know if that actually fixes it or not, but it was bad. Like, seriously, it was like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, the moment that this update went live, the game lagged out and, and became choppy shit. Like, the moment. So it's obvious that the patch, you know, to update the game to this new season and the new map, and the new map's called Apocalypse, they didn't test it well. They just wanted to push it out there. I mean, what the hell? The whole game, I went 90 minutes I was doing fine. And then all of a sudden, as soon as the patch went live and I started playing the new map, everything's laggy as shit. Like, what the hell is this? Of course, everyone on stream told me I was lying, even though I have concrete proof because Treyarch themselves admitted it publicly and they quick patched it. 
podcast. So, you know, idiots who just want to say everything I say is a lie and a complaint, fuck off. Because I was right. I wasn't making shit up. The game actually ran like shit out of nowhere. Um, <clears throat> okay, so anyway, hopefully, when I play the game again on Saturday, it'll be better. The problem is, of course, this is the free weekend. Everyone gets to play the game for free this weekend. Um, which means... There's going to be, you know, five times more people playing, likely five times worse connections. It's probably going to be a laggy mess on Saturday. What I can hope is that I will get the double knife kill quickly, get the sledgehammer, at least get to dick around with the sledgehammer, because I don't think it's going to be very serious gameplay considering how laggy it was last night. All right, I guess we'll see what happens. But anyway, yes, that is, that is currently happening right now. All right, but anyway, I digress. So today, the first stream here, Ghosts and Goblins, Resurrection, on the stream full stream we'll see how it goes i don't know how far i'll get <clears throat> i don't know how long the game is i guess we're gonna see how this goes okay later tonight on the late stream it's my weekly throwback session of yakuza 7 now the good news about this is number one we've had a lot of fun with these streams the last few weeks because they're not about the gameplay they're about me chilling with you guys having fun with conversation and just having a good time so the last few streams we've done of this has been very entertaining i've now been doing these for a month that's correct one whole month <clears throat> that I've been playing Yakuza 7 as a chill late night stream. We are almost ready to take on the final super dungeon. I've been told to be ready. Basically, everyone needs to be level 99. And you need to max out two jobs for each character. Once you've maxed out two jobs, you basically have high enough stats that you can take on the final super dungeon. So, I've maxed out jobs for, you know, one job for each character. And each character is about to hit level 99, and we've switched over, and now we're leveling up other jobs. So later tonight, that should be exciting. And I hope that you guys will join me for that. Not for the gameplay, but just to chill. It's all about hanging out, having fun conversation while I, I'm, I'm grinding in the game to prepare for the final Super Dungeon. Which we're getting toward. You know, like I said, probably between this week and maybe one more week of grinding, I should be able to have enough that maybe the time after that, then we can finally take it on. After a month and a half of work, we could fit, sit down and finally see if I can beat the final challenge of Yakuza 7, because I like the game so much. Okay? Now, that's what's happening on my streams today. Alright? But. But. Also, on top of all that, today's an exciting day because today, Sony is doing their state of play presentation digitally on the internet around 2 p.m. Pacific time. Okay? Okay? This is basically their big digital presentation where they are going to talk about all Sony games coming out for the rest of this year. We haven't heard from Sony officially in many, many months. You know, it was really right before the release of the PlayStation 5 when we got to hear about all the Sony exclusives coming out. And now we're going to get updates on all of that. And of course, of course, there's tons of speculation about what we're going to hear and see today. Some people are like, man, it ain't going to be that much. It's probably just going to be commonplace stuff we already know. Some people have insanely high expectations. Man, we're going to get release dates for God of War Ragnarok, the new Horizon game, and we're going to get finally info on Elden Ring after we've been waiting 72 years for it. We're finally going to find out something about Elden Ring. Maybe we'll get a single frame of animation from it, and that'll be enough for us. That'll satiate our appetites. Okay? <laughs> so, it's funny because, you know, you get both ends of the spectrum. I honestly don't know, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I honestly don't know what to expect, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be a mind-blowing presentation that we're gonna, all going to freak out about and be like, oh my god, it's so good, or if it's just going to be kind of a commonplace presentation where there's a few minor updates on things we already knew about and there's nothing really special. If anything, I would hope that there will be some release date information for games, because right now this year, I've been telling you guys this. Outside of the months of April, May, and June, where we now have a significant amount of releases coming out, we don't know anything about the rest of the year. We don't. We don't know anything about what's coming out in the summer, the fall. It's all up in the air. COVID really, in the last year, has destroyed gaming's schedule. It used to be you have these set times when you would find out about all the games coming out, and... You would always have a big rush of games early in the year, and then you'd have a rush of games in like August, September, October, November. Now, it's all up in the air because of COVID. We don't know what the hell's going on. Um, and it's weird because you used to be able to sit down and say, wow, look at this great gaming calendar for the year, all these releases, and you can't do that anymore. You can't even look past the next few months because no games have release dates past that. And keep in mind, there also used to be E3 used to be the big thing, right? 
you know, around May, June, all of a sudden we start getting all this information and now there's no more E3. It's going to be a digital presentation this year. If you want my opinion, I think E3 is completely defunct. I don't think it needs to exist at all. I think they're just going to go out of business because if Sony's already doing their own directs, if Nintendo's doing their own directs, you know what I mean? Like all the big guys are doing their own thing. What the hell do we need E3 for, right? So I'm excited for this Sony state of play today. Now, likely what will happen is when it starts, I'll go on break. And I'll go on break for like 20, 25 minutes. And I'll come back and keep playing, but I'm sure people are going to keep watching it and notifying me as I play Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Uh, what's going on with it? Um, you know, oh, is there anything new major released or, or, or announced or anything like that? So if there is, uh, we'll do it. We'll talk about it here live as it happens. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> we'll see what happens today. All right. Good stuff. Now, in addition to that, it was also announced overnight that there's going to be a Pokemon Direct tomorrow. And this is interesting because last week we had a Nintendo Direct. That was incredibly underwhelming, and a lot of people said, what the hell? Isn't this supposed to be the 25th anniversary of Pokemon? And there was nothing Pokemon in the Nintendo Direct. So a lot of people were very skeptical and thought, all right, you know what that means? That means that they're going to have their own Direct. And they were absolutely correct. It's happening tomorrow. So I get the feeling tomorrow during this, this Pokemon Direct, my predictions for this are as follows. Number one, they're going to talk about the new Pokemon Snap that's already scheduled. That's number one. Number two, I predict... They're going to have a new remastered game, a Pokemon game from a while ago, that they're going to release for the Switch. I don't know what it'll be. Some people are hypothesizing X, X and Y or something. Other people are hypothesizing Pearl and Diamond. I don't know what it'll be. But I hypothesize there will be a new remake game coming out for the Switch. I also believe that they will hint at the next major Pokemon game. I don't think they're going to give us any real info on it. But perhaps they will say, yes, it's in development, and here's the name of it, or something like that. Because with the success of Sword and Shield, and its DLCs, obviously they're going to keep making them. They're not just going to stop. They're a giant multi-billion dollar company. They're not going to stop making games. So, I think that there's going to be at least a hint, but I don't think it's, we're going to get any concrete info. Now, I could be completely wrong. Maybe the Pokemon Direct will be a two-hour presentation, completely outlining the next Pokemon game. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't foresee that happening, being that Sword and Shield just was last year... You know, with the DLCs, and usually it takes them a few years to develop the new games. I don't see that. I think they're going to have a filler game this year that's a remake or remaster uh, for the Switch. And then probably next year we'll start to get information on the new Pokemon game. That's my thoughts. Okay? Okay. So, there's a lot going on in gaming right now. we got State of Play today, Pokemon Direct tomorrow. This is good because we have had a drought of gaming news. There's been no news going on in gaming at all. For months and months and months. And now finally, we're getting concrete info on games. This is a good thing. I'm excited for both of these events, and I hope that we get a lot of good info about upcoming games. Okay? All right. Now, tomorrow's streams, all right, the main stream tomorrow is going to be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're going to go back and start my second run in the game from scratch, this time around 100% run. Because I feel that the game was so good. And you know what? It just ended way too soon. And I want to go back and re-experience the game from the start. <laughs> okay, I don't think so. <clears throat> I'm Obviously, if, if that were true, people would be like ripping the hair out of their heads and jumping out of windows. We're not doing that, all right? Tomorrow, it's Super Mario 3D World continuing on, okay? And we are currently in the Star World, which is World 9. I'm more than halfway through it, so we'll see how I do tomorrow. Um, from what I'm going to understand, if I continue with my 100% run, which is very difficult at this point to get all the, the hidden stuff... Um, there's more worlds. There's at least, I think, two more worlds that are unlockable if you continue to do the 100%. So we're going to keep on with that and see how it goes. I'm sure people will enjoy with their, their channel points wagering with how difficult that the game is getting, okay? <clears throat> then tomorrow night, Friday night, it's my weekly throwback stream of Street Fighter stuff. As you guys know, I love playing Street Fighter once a week. It's a lot of fun, and we'll have some more tomorrow night, okay? On Saturday... That's going to be my major stream of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Sadly, I get the feeling it's going to be a lag fest. But what I'm hoping is that relatively early on in the stream, I can get my double knife kill. And therefore, I'll be able to unlock the sledgehammer. And that'll be the fun for the stream, running around killing people with a fucking sledgehammer as much as I can. That'd be ridiculous. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I can get it. Okay? Also, keep in mind, there's supposed to be two 
new maps. I've already played on the Apocalypse map. I don't know what the other new map is. Maybe it's not for multiplayer. Maybe it's something different. But uh, I want to give it a, give it a look. Also, there's supposed to be new weapons, supposedly. So maybe I'll give those a try. Okay, once I unlock the sledgehammer, then maybe I'll swap over to other stuff. Okay, then, Saturday night. You ready? Bowser's Fury! Bowser's Fury will continue per your request. Last week, I finished the story of Bowser's Fury, and the people on the stream demanded, not requested, demanded, that I play Bowser's Fury again. They said, if I don't play Bowser's Fury again, all right, they're going to come to my house, they're going to cut the internet line. Now, I can't have that. I make my living on the internet streaming. I need internet. I can't have, uh, you know, I can't have my internet line cut. I can't believe that people would, would threaten me like this. But I said, all right, I'll do it. I'll play more Bowser's Fury if this is if this is what it's come to. If you guys really are, are going to put me up against the wall like that, I guess I have to do it. So we're playing more Bowser's Fury. Uh, we're playing more Bowser's Fury on Saturday night. Probably the last stream of Bowser's Fury. Really, all we're focusing on is getting the final cat shines. There's no more uh, story to the game. It's just completing the puzzle challenges and getting the cat shines. So, uh, that'll be Saturday night. And then Sunday, it'll be another major stream of Divinity Original Sin 2. Continuing off where we left off, where it looks like we're finally going to escape the intro area and move on to new locations. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. And, uh, and then Sunday night, um, it's going to be more, if you guys like the game today... Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, okay? I'm purposely leaving Monday open. I'm not sure what I want to play on Monday at all. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm leaving the day completely open on purpose so that we have some flexibility in the schedule to see what happens and to see what I feel like playing. Maybe it'll be more Mario. Uh, you know, I don't know. All right, I hope this sounds like good, good to you guys. This is a good amount of variety over the weekend, okay? A good amount of variety over the weekend. So let's see. <laughs> Let's see what happens, my friends. Okay, good stuff. Um, let's see. So outside of all that stuff going on, what else is happening? Well, guys, it's basically the last chance. Next three or four days is your last chance to nominate games for the upcoming Viewer's Choice event. Uh, around the end of this month or very beginning of March, I'm going to close off the nominations. I'm going to tally them up to see what was the most nominated games. And then I'm going to make a poll. All right? So, if you have not nominated games yet, all right, if you have not nominated games yet for the Viewer's Choice event, I strongly recommend you do so as soon as possible. And now would be a good time to rally. If you see that you nominated the game and a few other people also nominated it, now's the time to rally and try to get more support for it. Because the more games nominated, then the higher chance is going to get into that final poll. All right? So, please do. You can type exclamation point Viewer's Choice in the stream chat to do that. Um, the more nominations, the better. And like I said, around very early March, I'll be setting up the poll so that people can vote on what game will end up being the Viewer's Choice playthrough here in the next couple of weeks. You know, it's probably going to end up being, I'd say, middle of March is probably we're going to start up the Viewer's Choice. But maybe maybe a little earlier, maybe the second week of March, all right? <clears throat> we just need about a week for people to vote. So good stuff. Um, now, in addition to that, during the first week of March, I'm doing my Q&A show, Ask the King. I've not done this since Christmas, so it's about time to do it again. Um, the more questions I get for that show, the better that is as well. And if you submit your questions early, as in, you know, today, you have a much increased chance of getting your sh question answered on the show than if you wait till the day of and you try to, say, submit a question on social media or here in the stream chat. The ones that you submit early, I read through all of them, and I pick and choose the best ones for the show. So if you have not yet, <clears throat> I urge you, to post up your questions for Ask the King, you can type exclamation point Ask the King into the stream chat to get that going. Okay? <clears throat> Please do. All right. Um, all right. Outside of all of that stuff, I really just have one more kind of, not really an update, but kind of just a little bit of an addendum of information for you guys uh, for some changes that may be coming to my streams soon. So I'm going to be moving to Alaska. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to split my time between fishing for pod, Pollock, Alaskan Pollock, and streaming. <clears throat> so because of that, uh, you know, there's going to be a different, different, uh, all right, people are not liking this. All right, so people, all right, everyone's saying it's lame and I'm, I'm making this up. All right, forget it. You know what? Forget it. 
I was going to be jovial with you guys, but I'll just be matter of fact. You guys don't want joking Phil. You want serious Phil, right? You want Phil who just tells it like it is, matter of factly. Like you don't want no BS Phil, no joking, no, no joshing. You just want the fact, just the facts. Okay, just the facts it is. Very soon, all right, my wife is going to be making a work schedule adjustment, all right? It's looking like if things go according to plan, we have not got 100% confirmation. We're supposed to find out this coming week, actually. She's going to be swapping. She used to work late, late nights, and now it looks like she may be working mornings, <clears throat> okay? So if this indeed does go through as, as planned and as being promised, then that means that my schedule will likely not change. If it does, maybe it'll be skewed slightly. But likely the streams will be around the same times and around the same length. If, if I have to shift it an hour here or an hour there, I'll let you guys know. Ch chances are my stream times probably will not be affected. But things that will be affected, there may be some streams where I allow Jasper to come in here during the daytime. Remember, he used to come in at night when Kat was at work. But now, if she'll be at work during the daytime... I'll let him in during the day to hang out with us, okay? So we might have daytime streams with Jasper rather than nighttime streams. Um, in reality, this might actually be a better situation, and here's why. Um, what happens here is in the afternoons sometimes, not a lot during the winter, but a lot of the other times like spring and summer, the sun, during the afternoon, it, it beats on my wall here of the office, and it heats up this office a significant amount. To the point where this office is about 15 degrees hotter than the rest of the house. I know because I've measured it. The rest of the house will be like 70 something. And in here it will be 80, 80 something, 90 degrees. This is happening. It's crazy. The difference. The, 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 the temperature differential. Alright. Now, during the daytime, I have to have the door closed. Why? Because if I don't, my voice echoes and booms throughout the house. Alright. So, when I'm streaming, if my door is not closed... The whole house is me screaming. It's unbearable. So that's why during my streams, I have the door closed. Now, when my wife used to be working late nights, I would have the door open, all right? And then I would be able to have a more cooler night where the airflow is going through. That's also when Jasper would come and hang out with us, okay? But now it's looking like I'll be able to do that during the daytime, which is better because you'll have the cooler airflow and everything during the time of the day when it's the hottest, you see? So this may actually benefit me. I'm always complaining about, my God, it's so hot in here during certain daytime. Maybe that won't happen anymore. All right? Now, of course, when it gets hot, hot during the summer and I need the air conditioner on, we'll see what happens. If I have the air conditioner on, it's in the whole house, then I can still have the door open. But if we're all, you know, at a point where, you know, let's say April, May, it gets hot in here, I'm not going to have the air conditioner blowing through the whole house. I just need it in the office. So, so we'll see what happens. But the point I'm making is a lot of people have been saying, where's Jasper? He hasn't been on your stream in a while. You're right. You're absolutely right. We've been in a time of transition here, and we're supposed to have concrete answers on the finalized new schedule coming up this week. Everything's been in flux the last couple of weeks behind the scenes here, even though I'm not talking about it because it's personal stuff. I figured now I should mention it again since this is going to be affecting the streams. You may be seeing Jasper on the earlier streams, and we may have some changes to the schedule. I don't know if there'll be seriously big changes or not. Probably not. If anything, the biggest change that may happen is that my usually my day off from streaming is on a Tuesday. It may not be on a Tuesday anymore. It may end up being a completely different day of the week. I have no idea what day it would be at. Also, it may fluctuate. My day off may change every week, depending on my wife's work schedule. Because I don't know what her work schedule is going to be yet once these changes are solidified. Okay? So we're waiting to hear and get concrete answers. And we're supposed to have them supposedly sometime this coming week. All right? So, I'll let you know <clears throat> when I know, um, and we'll go from there. But for now, business as usual, all the streams this weekend are the same times. Everything's kind of the same until I get some kind of notification, and then I'll let you guys know if things have to change. Okay? Sounds good? Okay. What's funny is, 3Ake, or I don't know how to say this guy's name. I'm maybe supposed to be Bake, but it's the number three. He says... Tuesdays off is bad for day one views. I mean, you're in the past, you would be correct, but not anymore. In the past, you know, when I used to be a full-time YouTuber in particular, Tuesday was the big game release day. That was the day that I had to go to GameStop and pick up a ton of physical games, and I would start up all my new playthroughs for the week. That's not the case anymore at all. 
In fact, Tuesday is it's very rare when there's a new release on a Tuesday anymore. Most game releases are uh, big ones, that is, are on Fridays, and they're worldwide simultaneous releases. It used to be some big releases would come out in the United States on Tuesday, then they would come out in the European Union on Friday. It didn't make sense the way that they split the release dates, <clears throat> okay? Now, it seems to be a worldwide thing, usually on Friday, which I'm perfectly okay with. So, that's why Tuesdays have worked for me as my day off for the last year or so, but that may change shortly. Okay? All right. All right. That's really it in regards to everything that I wanted to mention, you know, streams-wise, game-wise, and everything there. Um, so, I don't, again, I don't feel like doing a, an extended plug segment today. What I will say is, guys, you know that I'm an independent content creator. I don't get sponsorships or paid by anyone behind the scenes to stream anywhere exclusively. I rely on you guys and your crowdfunding to allow me to do what I love. This is the best job I've ever had. I love hanging out with you guys every single day playing games and having fun. It's your support that allows me to continue to have fun doing what I love. And thank you to anyone who even considers contributing to my streams. It is not mandatory nor expected, but it is appreciated because that is my major source of income is your crowdfunding during the streams. How can you crowdfund? You could cheer, you could sub, you could tip. All those things are great. In particular, right now, I really need help with tips because I'm trying to raise enough funds to pay my tax guy so that he'll file my federal taxes. He charges me up front for it now, and I have to pay him up front. I forgot about this. Last year, he started doing this. I completely forgot about this, that I have to raise all this money out of nowhere, and uh, it sucks, quite frankly. I'm going to be strapped again. Two months in a row now, I'm going to be strapped for cash because of this. But I need to raise the money. As soon as I can raise the money, I give it to him. He'll file my taxes for me, and it's done. The problem is I need to raise the money. So please, if you want to help me out the most, please tip me today. All right? That's the way you can help the most. As you know, we have tips goals in effect for the streams. If we raise $50 in tips, I'll put on the Gunner glasses. If we raise $100 in tips, I'll put on a vest. Now, yesterday on the first stream, we wore two different vests. First, the camo vest was selected. All right? And then it was the beige. So today we will eliminate the camo vest and we'll say everything else is available. The beige, the blue, the red, the platinum, and the gray are all eligible for today's streams. If we happen to happen, if we happen, if we happen to double the tips goal today, which is incredibly unlikely, I will wear two vests again like I did yesterday, as silly as it was. You guys will be able to choose a second vest for me to put on. All right. I certainly don't foresee this happening today, especially since we, we by some freak chance did it yesterday. I don't see it happening again today. I'm just being honest. But it would be great if it did. I do need the help right now to raise funds to pay the tax guy. All right? Fair enough? Now, a couple quick things. Number one, if you're a regular stream viewer here, I strongly recommend that you have your name on Twitch not be associated with your real-life name or anything else from other social media accounts. Reason being, there's a lot of harassment that happens on Twitch. Sadly, I hate to say it. There's a lot of harassment going on. Um, with people trying to, you know, get away with online bullying and just basically being nasty to people because they think they can get away with it because it's anonymous. So the best way to, for, to stop that, make sure that you don't have a name here that links to other sites because then people can't follow you around the internet and try to harass you on places like social media. See what I'm saying? Uh, in addition to that, I strongly recommend... Um, I strongly recommend... Hold on a second here. <laughs> Something just updated. I just want to check on it here. Okay. A couple tips came in. And I just want to quickly... I just logged into my PayPal for the day. I just want to take a look. That one looks good. They're both... Okay, they're both good. Excellent. Now I, I can just give shout-outs to them later. Okay. Oh, my God. My stomach. Ooh, I got a big burp. Came out of nowhere. That was a quick audit. Absolutely, that was a quick tip audit. Um. Okay. So, in addition... I strongly recommend you close your open direct messages on Twitch. Sadly, people use them to harass people all the time for no fucking reason. Just being honest, the losers do it. They'll harass you, they'll send you nasty messages. You don't want to be bombarded with troll messages and shit. So I make it so that only people on my friends list can actually direct message me. What's funny is some people will watch my streams and contribute thinking that I'm over-exaggerating this situation. Acting like, oh, it feels just over-exaggerating. There's no bit. And then immediately they get bombarded with troll messages in their DMs and they're like, holy shit, Phil wasn't kidding. <laughs> you know? 
close them off. You don't need to have them open, seriously. Now also, I strongly recommend, as I just mentioned, with PayPal, if you're going to tip me, please create a verified PayPal account. All right, if you create a verified PayPal account, I can trust your tip right away and we can move smoothly through my streams and not derail everything with me having to confirm if a tip is real or not, if you're a valid stream viewer and if you really wanna support the streams or not. Okay, sadly, there's a lot of people out there who mess with me, who put fake tips into the system and then they try to pull them later with chargebacks or they use a stolen credit card to put in a fake tip and these chargebacks have really hurt me badly in the last six months or so. So I'm putting these security measures in place. If you have a verified PayPal account, I know you're not gonna charge it back. Because if you commit fraud, your PayPal account will get shut down and you'll get in trouble with your financial institution, you see? So how do you make a verified PayPal account? You'll link your financial information. For example, your bank account and or your real life identity stuff so that they can confirm that you're a real person, all right? Thank you to those who in the last month have gone the extra mile and made verified PayPal accounts. Those who are regular supporters have usually done so and helped me out a lot with this. I really appreciate that, okay? I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, um, that's it. I blew through that segment. I didn't want that to be an elongated segment today. I had enough with the elongations. The elongations, uh, we've had enough of this nonsense. So, we need to shorten the elongations. Okay? <laughs> shorten those goddamn elongations. So, let's do some shoutouts. <laughs> Alright, let's do shoutouts for those who have contributed so far today. Let's get these leaderboards updated. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? There's one final thing I want to talk about. Basically, EA has shit-canned Anthem. All right. And for some people, they feel this is very unfortunate uh, because some people actually liked Anthem. I'm one of the people who was very skeptical of the game all along. And I said, dude, Anthem from Bioware, but it's going to be a looter shooter co-op game. It's not going to be a narrative-based game. Didn't make sense to me. Bioware is great at making narrative-based games like Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Knights of the Old Republic. Like, this is what they do to make them <clears throat> basically go into a situation where they had to make a game that was not in their comfort zone. And from all reports that we heard from some devs that work at Bioware behind the scenes, they didn't even want to make the game. Like, they outright told EA... We want to make another narrative-based game. This is not what we do. This is too similar to Destiny. And any time that Bioware devs mentioned the word Destiny to EA, EA freaked out. Oh, this game will not be Destiny. No, this is not totally not Destiny. How dare you say this game is going to be like Destiny? And during the course of development, Bioware kept saying, yeah, the game plays just like Destiny, except you're viewing a mech suit, but it's the same kind of deal. It's a looter shooter. There's nothing really ind individualized about the game. It, you know... It's it's sad that this is what the game's going to be. But that's what EA wanted. EA literally was telling them step by step what to do because they felt this was going to be a big money maker for them because of the success of franchises like Destiny and The Division and other stuff. They wanted their own big looter shooter under their wings. And that's what they wanted Anthem to be. Even though, just think about this. One of your major, major game studios who puts out hit after hit, admittedly, Mass Effect Andromeda was a flop, but usually they put out hit after hit after hit, okay? They come to you and say, listen, we don't want to make this game. We don't think this game is going to be good. We feel that this is going to be, a, you know, something that's not good, it's going to flop, you know. They come to you and tell you this, and then you say, we don't care, you know. We actually don't care what you say as a game dev, we own you make this game <laughs> wow talk about artistic stranglehold right those devs must have hated every day they worked on that fucking game seriously and you gotta feel bad for a studio that put out greatness that then had to put out that okay i mean let's be honest here the moment anthem was announced and they said it was going to be a looter shooter i was like i don't think this is going to be a good game I said, this game doesn't look good and I was skeptical the whole time when it came out. I said, I'm not buying it. I'm going to wait and see. And boy, that was one of the best choices I ever made. The game completely flopped at launch. Terrible gameplay. Uh, well, okay. Not terrible gameplay. It's just the same gameplay you've played in other looter shooters. It's the same premise. Nothing really individualized or original. Just kind of, you know, okay, been there, done that already. Why do I want to do this under the guise of a new game from EA and Bioware? when I, It's the same shit, right? <clears throat> 
And, uh, you know, tons of issues at launch that everyone complained about. Complete lack of content. The game did not have any kind of uh, any kind of entertaining loop that you wanted to hook hook you on and play with your friends. It was just play through it once. And you're like you're bored as shit. Um, and then you know after it tanked, EA said, "Okay, we know this game sucks. We're gonna recommit. We're gonna have Bioware put more time into this game. We're gonna call it Anthem Next. We're gonna have them redesign the game from the ground up and make it a better game." And they have had Bioware work on this for a year and a half. And then this week they reviewed the work and canceled the whole project. So anyone who was on board for Anthem got completely fucked over with EA's bullshit promises. You know? Now here's the thing. <clears throat> I decided to skip the whole thing. And I said I did not want to play this game. Because I did, I missed out on all the drama and all the disappointment. And quite frankly, I would much rather have EA focus on Dragon Age and Mass Effect, the franchises that they know they know how to make, than this, this fucking franchise. So, for me, I feel this was a great choice. But I don't know why, like, you know what I mean? Like, the problem is EA invests so much money into a franchise and hype. Remember, tons of advertising, tons of hype was put behind Anthem. So, EA put so much money into it, they didn't want to just cut their losses and run. They wanted to, to act like they were going to fix this game. And really, I don't think they actually had the intention of doing that. I think what it was is they just wanted to wait enough time so that people would want more Mass Effect and more Dragon Age and forget about Anthem. I really feel it was like a delaying tactic. I mean, let's face it. What the hell were they going to do with this game, a looter shooter, to not make it a looter shooter that people would... You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> anyway, now other reports are coming out today. People are all talking about this in stream chat. That apparently <clears throat> there was a new internal edict by EA that they've now told Bioware because of the success of Jedi Fallen Order, which was a single-player narrative-based game, and of course because of the flop of Anthem, they've decided that with Dragon Age Inquisition... Not, excuse me, Inquisition. I totally screwed that. The next Dragon Age game, whatever it's called, because we don't know what it's going to be called, is going to basically be like a normal Dragon Age game. Because originally the idea <clears throat> was that this Dragon Age game was supposed to be a games-as-a-service game. Oh, those really work out well, don't they? These games as a service games where you buy it and there's lackluster content at launch and there's not much really to support $60 price tag and then they promise you the world in the future and then it's very hit or miss and spotty if these companies really deliver on that or not. Oh, that's definitely what I want from Dragon Age. I mean, definitely. Take my money and hopefully you give me a full game over the course of five years, right? <clears throat> so, I'm very happy to hear that they are not doing that anymore with Dragon Age, that they're basically just going to make a normal Dragon Age game, which is what they should have done to begin with, okay? If anything, maybe this means that maybe we're getting back on track. Maybe we had a five-year detour from greatness. You know, Andromeda was a huge disappointment, disappointing flop, and Anthem was a waste of time. Maybe now we're getting back on track and Bioware will be able to put out good games again? Who knows? <clears throat> Remember something, guys. <clears throat> Recently, just a couple months ago, a few months ago, um, there was basically a shift in management in Bioware. The big people behind the creative initiatives of the company left. So, you know, the people in charge there are not the same people anymore. So who knows what's going to happen with these games? It's kind of like, oh, <clears throat> you know, this is a great idea. To, to but, but if you have different people behind the reins of developing the games, then who knows what's going to happen, right? I don't know. So let's find out. But that's what I just wanted to briefly mention that because the big Anthem thing is a big thing in the news today. All right, let's get the shout-outs. First shout-out of the day is an overnight cheer from Golden Colts who says, Do you think beer is for peasants? A bartender at a fancy lounge gave a smug chuckle when I ordered beer and not a mixed cocktail. It feels bad. No, absolutely not. Fantasy Star PG has cheered overnight. <laughs> Excuse me. I have to clear my throat. Fantasy Star PG just cheered. He says, so, well, he didn't just cheer. It was overnight. He says, Sony will continue to do day and date releases for smaller titles like Bug Snacks. Do you think Sony is easing people into a future $10 increase for PS Plus? They probably held off on flipping the Switch after the backlash that Microsoft got, but history shows Sony always wants its games, controllers, and PS Plus at the same price point. Yes, I do believe that eventually Sony will raise prices. When? I have no idea. 
I do believe they will raise prices eventually. Fantasy Star PG cheered again. He says, since Microsoft has no plans for a Windows 12, at least for the foreseeable future, will you feel more comfortable spending more money on a high-end Windows 10 gaming PC when you get around to it? I'm just going to get whatever's whatever's the new thing. <clears throat> it could be Windows 10. It could be Windows uh, you know, 24. I don't know what it's going to be. But whatever's the new thing is what I'll do when I get a new gaming PC. But that's, at this point, it's like every single thing possible is conspiring against me to not allow me to spend any money to, help to improve my business. First, my state taxes were way higher than usual when I paid them in January. And that put me back a whole, like, two weeks of having no money. Now, I got to raise money to pay my tax guy. And it's like, every month there's going to be fucking something now at this point. It's getting ridiculous. So, I hope not, but... You know, I had planned early this year to hopefully make some improvements. Like I said, I need a new chair and a new laptop. I can't even do that. A new gaming PC is like the last thing on my mind right now. <clears throat> okay. Down in Ottawa, I was cheered. As I put together a main menu in the Unity engine. Uh, once I program the basic game logic, we can get Daddy Italy's Tip Audit Simulator up and running. Think of the game papers, please, but with tips instead of passports. This sounds absolutely riveting. I'm sure... I'm absolutely sure that this is going to be one of the best releases in history. People are going to want to be playing this constantly. All you want to do, you want to sit inside of a virtual PayPal auditing tips. That's the whole game. It's going to be exciting as hell. Who wouldn't want to do that? I do it all day. It's fun. <laughs> anyway. Carmen T2000 did a 100-bit cheer. Now, technically, that's the biggest cheer right now. Let's get that on the leaderboard. Because I haven't updated the leaderboard at all, and I feel bad. So let's update the leaderboard now. 100 bits. He says, Phil, I demand to see Jasper, and I, w I want you, yes, you, to give him a kiss on his forehead. He deserves him. Uh, you can't see Jasper. He's downstairs uh, with Cat right now, actually. And I'm sure they're doing fun stuff together. Uh, like I said, she's actually been playing some Persona 5 recently. And he actually relaxes with her on the couch uh, while she plays. Which is funny because, you know, you got Mona in the game, who's the cat, who chills with you. So it's kind of funny. you got a real cat chilling with, with cat as she plays a game with a cat that chills with you while you're, while you're doing the things in the game. Get it? There's a cat with cat as she plays a game with a cat that chills with you. Okay, enough of that. Anyway. Thank you for the cheer, Carmen T. Like I said, in the coming week, I should have more information. What the hell? I should have more information on schedule and the like and anything that's going to change around here. And I should be able to give you guys more more deets. As the, is, that, is that the lingo now? They call it deets? Give you the deets? I'll give you some deets on what's going to happen with that in the future and things are going to change or not. And I'll let you know when Jasper will actually be coming in here to chill with us. Okay? <clears throat> the deets. Uh, Dangerous Dave resubscribed for 18 months and I got the COVID. Don't ban me, Phil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't ban me, Phil. I would not ban you for having COVID. That's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous, over the top, insane. Why would you say something like that? First of all, Dangerous Dave, if you if you do have it and you're serious, I'm sorry. I hope you get better soon and I wish you the best. It's not a disease to be taken lightly or joke about. If you're joking about it, that's fucked up. There's people who died from this thing. You shouldn't be joking about it. All right? But if you do seriously have it, I'm very sorry, <coughs> and I hope that you get better soon. <clears throat> Honest Fan has resubscribed for 16 months in a row. This has been a great run, Phil. Hype for the Ghosty Ghouls. Ghosty Ghouls? No, it's not. This is not Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts is the sequel. This is Ghosts and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins resurrected. No ghoulies. No ghoulies. <clears throat> okay. Um. Big Bad Buffoon. Has cheered and says, when when your wife's asleep, is it considered a cat nap? Oh, you guys and your plays on words. You're so clever. Totally haven't heard that one before. Um, v Virgatoto has done a 500-bit cheer, and that is the biggest cheer of the day. He says, as a guru to many frogs and weebs, would you consider yourself spiritual? Of course, as you know. <clears throat> you may not be aware of this, Virgatoto, but as early as 2010... I was accused of being a cult leader. That is correct. DSP Cult Leader is an account that used to exist on YouTube and on the internet. 
And what it would do is try to slander me and say that everything I did was because I was a cult leader and I was leading children like the Pied Piper. I was leading children to their doom. I would dance through the streets with a big uh, wood woodwind instrument. And I would play my raucous tunes. And the children would be attracted, much like the Pied Piper leading the rats through the streets in his own, uh, his own lore or whatever. Oh, I think this thing just froze up on me. Hold on a second. I was making a joke about Pied Piper, and now I think this did lock up. It did. Oh, come on. My activity feed is completely locked up. I need to reload it. <clears throat> it 100% froze on me. Okay, did this just unlock now? Let's see. Oh, it's reloading. Hold on. Son of a bitch. Right in the middle of me doing these shout-outs, it locked up. Aha. So, what it is is someone dropped a sub bomb for the first time. And when they did, <laughs> it crashed my feed. But actually, it works. If I click on it, it shows me all the subs that they gifted, which is very nice. Awesome. And I'll, I'll give a shout-out for that in a few minutes here. But anyway, yes, Ver, Ver, Virga Toto... I was like the Pied Piper. I would dance through the streets with a woodwind, a giant woodwind flute. And I would go... <laughs> and all the children would follow me through the dregs of the internet down to hell. This is what I did, you know, over 10 years ago. And... <clears throat> and DSP cult leader pointed this out. Said that I was basically having an army of children follow me. And erroneously praise me for the content I was putting out and that was a horrible person corrupting the youth of the world you know that's what I was told 11 plus years ago that's when it started and then back then the difference was when people made silly conspiracy theories up everyone laughed everyone looked at that guy and pointed and laughed and said, ha, 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 look at the idiot look at that moron over there saying something so stupid Phil's just a guy who plays games on the internet and you know he's he's an underdog you know he's, he's funny you know, he's just some guy. He doesn't have any money. He doesn't have any, any backing or nothing. He's just a guy playing games, having fun. What the hell would someone say something stupid like that for? Everyone laugh and point at the moron. <laughs> but today, now people believe it. People today are so stupid and gullible and just so dumb. They believe everything. So if, you told, if you've told everyone I was a fucking Martian, they would believe it because they're that stupid. These idiots, they're following all these conspiracies on the internet about fucking QAnon and 9-11 and all this dumb fuck shit. That they believe every single thing said about anyone on the internet because they want to believe insane drama. So, anything said about me, you know, they believe is true now. So, you know, 11 years ago, crazy shit would be said and everyone would laugh and write it off as, a, as an idiot or a joke or, you know, this guy's a fucking moron. Today, it's like everything must be true because we're stupid and gullible morons. I just hate to say it, the longer we go on with humanity, the dumber it gets. I don't even know what else to say. Ten years ago, people weren't that stupid. So. <laughs> Get Bant said, I heard people say you were a nice guy and very good at video games. You see what I mean? How gullible can you be? How could you possibly believe that? You'd have to be a moron. Anyway, let's continue. 8 Dom 8 is the first tipper of the day. Tip me a dollar thirty. He says, Phil, I got banned a while ago for being a dumbass. I'm looking forward to Ghosts and Goblins and requesting an unbanned to follow along with that. But well, you need to email me at darksidephil.hotmail.com. You need to give me your actual name in the chat. All right. Um, and what I will do is I will research what happened. I'll research why you got banned. A lot of people who got banned in the past, I unban. I give them some, some clemency. I believe that people will, will, uh, learn from their mistakes and that they have a chance to, to come back and prove themselves to not be a dumbass in the chat. And I usually unban people who've been banned for a long time. I do. Okay. <clears throat> so there you go. All right, big bad buffoon cheered. So I hear police sirens pretty noisy today in your area. Do you hear sirens often nowadays? Not too often. The, the truth is last year we did have a lot of increase in crime around here. And I'd say at places like retail stores, there's a lot of shoplifting and stuff that goes on now. That's way increased from what it used to be. But in general, no, we don't have any kind of increase in violent crime or anything like that. It's still pretty safe. Moonwalkman, resubscribe for 32 months. Thank you, Moonwalkman, for 32 months of support. I really appreciate that. Um, Mad Spam 
has resubscribed for four months. Thank you, Matt Spam, for four months of support. I appreciate that. <clears throat> now, let's see here. <clears throat> so, I got a uh, HVAC guy to me $1.30 and says, I heard about your heating and cooling situation. Looking to getting a flare supply registered coupled with an Ecobee thermostat with room temp sensors. It will close off the rooms that have reached set temp and will redistribute airflow where needed. Um, my my cooling system and heating system in the house is bad. It only works for basically downstairs and the bedroom upstairs. That's it. Oh, and I was going to say the bathroom. The uh, heating and cooling does not reach the outer rooms of the house because when they designed the ventilation system, they designed it in a flawed manner. I know because when I first moved in here, I thought the airflow was absolutely terrible to this room and the room across the hallway here. And I had a, a professional come and look at my furnace to say, you know, is it working? Is it, you know, what's the deal? And he looked into the system. He's like, this is terrible. He goes, basically the way they designed this is the air all pushes to one centralized area and doesn't go to the other rooms on the outside of your house. So that's why when I turn on the air, whether it's cooling or heating, you feel almost nothing in this room or the room next door. He's like, basically what they would have to do is completely redesign the ductwork in the house in order to even get proper air distribution in the house. He says, then you would have to probably want a central air system because what's the pro point of having proper ductwork if you don't have cooling? Because right now we have none. We have no cooling at all for the house. <clears throat> so basically he said, yeah, you could do it and it'll cost you about 10 grand. Oh, great. 10 grand. Well, that's something for a long, 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 long-term goal. <laughs> so, <clears throat> no, I don't have money to redo anything with the, with the air system or anything in the house right now. I would, it would be what you just said, HVAC guy, plus, on top of that, I'd have to redo all the ductwork in the house to even make it work. So, that's not happening. <clears throat> okay. Super Sly Gaming is to me $1.30 and says, I got the flare supply registered coupled with Ecobee thermostat with room temp sensors, and I went from about a 10 degree difference from one end of the house to the other to about a two degree difference. Well, that's good. That sounds good. That sounds to me like you're the same person as HVAC guy. Because <laughs> you're talking about it. So, thank you for the tip. But that's nothing that I'll be able to do at any time in, you know, in the, the close future. <clears throat> uh, Big Bad Buffoon cheered and said, all the cities... You've been to for Street Fighter tournaments, rank the cities from best to worst. Oh, man. That's tough. That's very tough to do. I will say this. There's been a few cities that I really enjoy. Uh, I went to Houston, Texas. And when I went down to Texas, those were some of the most hospitable people I ever met in my life. Anyone who I ever hung out with or spent time with in the Street Fighter community from Texas was like the nicest people. And they, I get, I get the feeling they get a bad rap for various re political reasons, but those are seriously some of the nicest people I've ever met. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> also, I would say, uh, like, uh, Virginia and Maryland. Those are also two states where all the gamers I ever met from those states were really nice people. Um, outstanding people. Okay? Now, by the way, the reason I'm saying this is because I came from the Northeast, so I'm not going to mention a Northeastern state when that's usually where I was. I'm talking about if I ever traveled you know, um, the thing is the people who I met from California weren't bad people, but they didn't like me because I was from the East coast. A lot of the time there was that whole East coast, West coast rivalry going on. So it would be like, <clears throat> wow, this person's a nice person. They're really good at the game, but they hate my guts because we're on different coasts and we're supposed to be rivals. Right. <clears throat> so anyway, that's kind of, that, that's just what I'll say. I'll leave it at that. Um, Virga Toto cheered again. 55 bits and I've helped him go, go fund his Daddy Italy game. There you go. You've go funded Daddy Italy. Sounds good. <laughs> How silly. Um, <clears throat> Tarantula MS 2018 tipped me $5. Thank you for the tip. That's the biggest tip of the day. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. Uh, here we go. Tarantula. Twenty. Oh, wait. MS 2018. Oh, shit. MS 2018 is 5 bucks. Thank you, Tarantula. 
And he says, do you happen to ha have that Ryu headband that was in your retro last retrospective? I know you threw it away in the video, but you had the headband in a future Firm Request Ridicule video in Halloween 2009. I have no idea. Likely, I don't have it. Most of that kind of silly stuff was either left in Connecticut or thrown out at some point. I do have <clears throat> a couple random bins of odds and ends that I brought here when I moved here from Connecticut, you know, seven years ago. But I haven't gone through them in a long time. So I, I can't 100% tell you that if I have it or don't have it, but likely I don't have it. If I remember correctly, I put that Ryu headband on my Christmas tree a couple of years. As silly as that sounds, it was like I used to do a gaming stuff on my tree, but I think I got rid of it eventually. <clears throat> Golden Colts cheered and said, my friend eats his Snickers with a fork and knife and some attempt to seem cultured or whatever. I think he's an idiot. Who's in the wrong? I mean, you could eat stuff however you want, but that's pretty silly. That has a wrapper. You hold it with the wrapper, you eat it easily. Albert Aponte tipped me a dollar thirty. He says, "Phil, hope you're doing well. Of the two games, which one do you feel is a better potential of Dragon Age or Mass Effect?" Oh man. Well, you know, it's an interesting question. I feel that when Mass Effect came out, it was doing something that people had wanted: sci-fi. Because we had had so many fantasy RPGs, so many fantasy, like ridiculous amount of fantasy related RPGs. And, you know, it was doing something different, you know, looking outside the box basically. And it did it well. You had character building, you had relationship building, you had great gameplay that was RPG esque, you had great graphics, you know, lore building of the world. It was really nicely done. Um,. Now, of course, over time, that kind of degraded a bit, especially with Andromeda. <laughs> but I felt that that was really something unique and different when it came out. Um, Dragon Age is great. I like the Dragon Age franchise. I thought Inquisition was great. A lot of people didn't like it. I thought it was outstanding. Um, but it is fantasy, and so many RPGs are fantasy these days. It's refreshing to see something that's not a fantasy RPG. You know what I mean? Um, so Madrek1 has dropped a five-sub bomb on the channel. I appreciate that, Madrek1. We haven't had many sub-action uh, much sub action recently. So the five lucky people are Fuzzy Taint, Rogue Leader, Forzer07, Tayami, and XO Chaos. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, Toxic Tex now is the top cheer of the day with a 501 bit cheer. Toxic Tex has tried to stay at the top of the cheering leaderboard all week long. And I really do appreciate that, Toxic Tex. Let's get you up there. It's 502. No, 501. Will anyone be able to unseat Toxic Tex? I'm pretty sure he's been the chop cheerer every stream he's been on this week. <laughs> All right. Timbo Slice Cheers says, Today Twitter announced a thing called Super Followers. People pay so much to get exclusive tweets and stuff like a patron. Is that something you would consider doing when it launches? Uh, I'd have to look into it. Like, first of all, a lot of people follow me on Twitter. Not many people interact with me on Twitter. Reason being... Twitter is a toxic environment where tons of trolls harass the shit out of people who try to interact with me positively. So if someone so much as responds to my tweet and saying, wow, looking forward to your stream today, Phil, all of a sudden trolls come and, and attack them and spam them with na nasty, disgusting shit, okay? And I see all the time people who are fans of mine arguing with these people. I'm like, oh my God, it's just not worth the time. Just fucking block these idiots and ignore them. But a lot of people don't respond to my tweets. You'll notice I'll have a tweet that thousands and thousands of people see, because you can actually see who actually views your tweets. Every tweet I put out gets thousands and thousands and thousands of views, but very few likes, very few retweets, because when people like and retweet my shit, people harass them online, all right? Now, I can't imagine this thing launching on Twitter and people using it and not getting harassed. You know what I'm saying? Maybe this would, maybe if people have a paid subscription to Twitter, They'll have some protections in place or something. I don't know. I would like to see what are the features of a paid Twitter. Does it mean you don't have to watch ads anymore because there's fucking ads all over Twitter that are insanely annoying? Does it mean that there's other features that could stop trolling? I don't know. But I guess we'll find out. Um, I'd be interested to find out more. If you get more information, send it my way. Okay? But I don't know what the hell it is, so I'm not going to comment on it yet. Um, let's see here. Snow Carl Chudy says, I just wanted to say I appreciate how inclusive your chat is and how everyone is welcome no matter what or who they might be. I hope Mrs. Burnell and Jasper Kitty are good. Thank you very much. That's a very positive message. I appreciate that. Big Bad Buffoon Chudy says, have you been to a Walmart since COVID? What's the deal with the automatic gates as soon as you walk in? Do you have this at your Walmart? I have not been to Walmart during COVID. I very rarely ever went to Walmart. So, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Jay Hawkward cheers. Said, Instead of asking the king or maybe a sub goal, can we get a story time with the king where you tell us unknown or little known stories about your life? The truth of the matter is here, Jay Hawkwood, 
I don't think there's many stories I haven't told. Over the 12 years I've been a content creator, and I've done Ask the King and other shows and streaming, I've basically told all the, the old school stories from my past. And I don't think there's much else to tell. I think it's more about it's about the future rather than the past, you know? Um, I didn't have a super interesting life until I became a content creator, quite frankly. Besides the Street Fighter stuff. And the thing is, a lot of that Street Fighter stuff, I'm out of the loop now for over a decade. I probably don't even remember half the shit. <laughs> you know? Uh, Iconic Christian did a 100-bit cheer. So what's your favorite Nintendo Switch game for 2017 to 2021? Super Mario Odyssey. Still my favorite game. It was my game of the year 2017. Still my favorite Switch game of all time. Mythical cheered. He says, on your next Call of Duty stream, will you please invite Wings? You guys would be a hilarious duo. Lots of people want to see it happen. Well, what I'm going to need to do is sit down and give it some really serious thought. No! Absolutely fucking not. I'm not doing that. I'm not crazy. Okay. Let us now do shout-outs for the top cheers of the week so far. Um, Thank you to those who cheered so far this week. In 10th place, Biggest Kobe Fan 24. In 9th place, Baron Gaming Stream. Tied with your boy Bob, so technically that's a tie for 8th. In 7th place, Snow Carl. In 6th place, Virgatoto. In fifth place, that Anonymous. In fourth place, Random Game Roulette. In third place, Timbo Slice GB. In second place, Pumpy Venus. And in first place, Toxic Text. Like I said, Toxic Text really making a, a effort this week to stay on top of the cheers every stream. And I appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Shout out to Timbo Slice who gifted a single subscription to the channel so far this week, and to Madrek One who just dropped that five sub bomb. That is very appreciated. All right, one more cheer just came in from Snow Carl, who says, Would you as a personal favor to the chat and myself forgive PW Dubs if you sincerely apologize? Please, I miss him. Uh, what happens with, with banned stream chatters is none of anyone's business. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. The more you bug me about it, the less inclined I am to ever let someone back into the chat. I'm serious about that too. If, if it just gets left alone and maybe I feel that things have calmed down with a particular person who got banned for various reasons and things are, you know, okay, maybe they learned their lesson. Maybe now is the time you know, that's great. The more you ask, the less chance that person will be coming back. So, so Smoke Carl, just so you know, because you just asked, PW Dubs will now be delayed from coming back to the stream chat for at least another two weeks. Just so you know, at the very minimal, it just got pushed back by two weeks because you said something. So there you go. All right. <laughs> Everyone's laughing now. Timbo Slice is cheered again. He says, I know you don't like Cyberpunk, but they announced due to the lame person that hacked their stuff, they have to delay the release of the promised fixes. And it sucks that the company might be ruined for good due to a dumb hacker thinking it's cool to steal property and it's a federal crime. I, I talked about this yesterday. I 100% agree. I said, this if this is this case. Actually, I talked about this two, three days ago. I said, they, did, they deserve a pass on this one. Listen, we all know they fucked up horribly with Cyberpunk. We know this. But there's absolutely zero excuse to give a pass to a fucking per person committing a federal crime and hacking them. It's horse shit. It sucks now because their game might be doomed. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for a great pre-stream. I'm going to end the pre-stream now. We're going to take a break for me to use the restroom. All right. When we come back, it's the premiere of Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. I don't know how hard it will be. Hopefully it's entertaining. I get the feeling we'll have a lot of Channel Points wagers here to see how I do in the game. It should be exciting. I always like a new game release. Wait a minute. Timbo Slice Cheery said the devs of Bugs Snacks are going to be darker ending before it was changed to how darker would it have been. Probably even darker than it is now. Probably would have been like everyone dies or something crazy. You know, it's a dark ending as it is. So I can't imagine, you know, what their original idea was, but that game is great. Okay, let's take a break. I'll be back in a few minutes. Probably about 15, 20 minutes with the premiere of Ghosts and Goblins on the stream, Ghosts and Goblins Remaster or Resurrection on the stream. Hope to see you then. In the meantime, grab a drink, grab a snack, use the restroom yourself, whatever you need to do, and I'll see you in a few. All right.